Question number two, what is the value of the iteration indicator after executing the code? So I think you know very well that this is the while loop. In while loop, we have two conditional terminals like one is stop if true and another one is continue if true. So this conditional terminal is called continue if true. So this conditional terminal is connected to true true constant so that means this will continue to execute the iterations or the while loop will continue to execute since it's permanently connected to true or it's have fixed value as true continue to execute this while loop and we may not able to stop the iterations or we may not able to stop the execution of the code so we cannot determine what would be the value of the iteration since the loop is continuously executing we may have to abort the application or we may have to abort the code to stop the execution of the code so the iteration terminal output we may not we cannot determine its indeterminate loop basically so our iteration value also would be indeterminate so the answer is indeterminate. Let's move on to the question number three. What is the output of the build array function in the following block diagram when concatenate inputs is selected? In the block diagram, you can check the function used is build array. So build array function basically uses to generate two dimensional or one dimensional or multi dimensional arrays. But in this question, suppose there is a feature called concatenate input to selected, then what would be the output? Let me open up lab view and show you what is the concatenate input option in the build array function. And let's calculate what would be the output when the particular option is selected. can look at the screen here in the block diagram we have a build array function as per our question we have two inputs two array of inputs which are connected to input terminals of your build array function now build array function can generate two dimensional array out of these two inputs or it can generate one dimensional array by appending the second array elements from, from at the end of the first array elements so whether you want to append the elements or you want to create a new uh, rows in the array so that is decided by the function or the feature called concatenate input on selecting the, this concatenate inputs we are basically we are creating a single dimensional array by concatenating the inputs of second array into the first array so on executing this code you can understand what is the function of concatenate input having two arrays connected at the input terminals one array is one minus four three and the second array is 7 minus 2 6 since concatenate is selected the second array elements are appended or concatenated with first array elements so the output array is a single element array or single dimensional array i can say suppose concatenate input is unselected that means we are treating each input array individually and we are finally we we will get a two dimensional array like as shown in figure so the first row elements would be 1 minus 4 3 and second row elements would be 7 minus 2 6 as shown in the figure so either you want to generate 
two dimensional array or single dimensional array by appending the elements it's decided by the by the option you select by right clicking the function on build array called concatenate inputs so let's move on to the question so as per the question we are concatenating the inputs so of course our build array output should generate single dimensional array with the elements from the second array should be appending with the elements on the first array right so the answer would be 1d array of 1 minus 3 sorry 1 minus 4 3 7 minus 2 and 6 let's move on to question number 4 what is the value of the iterations indicator after running this vi so the diagram block diagram shows a for loop the for loop we have connected n value as 7 also we have connected two arrays one array is having 10 elements and another array is having five elements on the left hand side of the for loop you can see the auto indexing of the arrays are enabled that means the array will supply data one by one to the for loop for each of its iterations now there are three values are available for the for loop to decide the number of iterations so as per that so here n represents 7 that means you for loop can execute 7 times array of 10 elements again it should supply 10 elements so it may execute 10 times array of 5 elements so we have to execute 5 times so overall the for loop has to choose one value from the values such as 7 iterations or 7 uh, iterations or 10 iterations or 5 iterations so out of that for loop will choose the minimum number of iterations or minimum number of inputs among multiple iteration counts so for this problem since we have three inputs uh, is controlling the number of iterations for loop has to choose the minimum one which is five element array so the for loop will be executing only five since our question is what is the value of the iterations after running this vi so i value basically supplies the iteration count or the, the current iteration value since our for loop is executing only five times i will generate five minus one that is four four will be passed at the end of the for loop execution so your iteration value would be four and the answer is four right so i value is equal to four after executing the for loop question number five what is the value of the shift register answer after the following code as has executed again we have a for loop with the number of iterations as 5 so in addition to that we have shift registers also in the block diagram for example left shift register right shift register we have number of iterations as 5 shift registers are initialized to 1 so the question is what is the shift register answer after the following code is executed that is after 5 execution what would be the value of the shift register answer since the initial value of the shift register is 1 then we are multiplying with the constant 2 so during the first iteration your answer would be 1 into 2 2 so 2 will be available on the shift register answer after executing first iteration so still we have four more iterations so for that the output or 
the output of the first iteration will be available on this up arrow that is shift register will be moved automatically to the down arrow to supply the input or to supply the data to the multiply function to the multiply function during the second iteration so during the second iteration the output of the first iteration that is 2 will be available on this terminal and again we have a constant 2 so 2 into 2 4 4 would be the output of shift register answer after the second iteration so again 4 will come here 4 into 2 8 then 8 into 2 16 then 16 into 2 32 so totally we are executing five times the code inside the for loop so having one as a first data then we are feeding back the output of each iteration to the input of the multiply function to generate output so after completing all the five iterations we will be getting answer as 32 in the shift register answer so the answer would be 32 the problem the program let's move on to the question number six what is the result of the following array addition so we know that in lab view the operators such as adder subtractor or multiply or divider so majority of the arithmetic operators are basically a polymorphic operators this polymorphic means it can perform arithmetic operations with single or numeric data type or boolean or or i can say a, a constant or it can operate arrays also so we can supply input data as like non array data or array data so we have two inputs like 80 and 20 as one array and another array we have 40 10 and minus 60 so if you supply these two array inputs to your adder function so adder will be adding the data from both arrays that is 80 and 40 will be added and going to be the first element of your output array and 20 and 10 would be added and will be generating the second element for your output array and third element on this on the input array 1 it's not displayed so we can assume that third element is not present in the first input array whereas in the second input array the third element is minus 60 so in in this array the third element is or i can say zero index first index or second index element is empty element so we cannot add empty element with minus 60 so we will be having only two elements in the output array one is 80 plus 40 and second is 20 plus 10 so the, your answer would be 120 and 30 right let's move on to question number seven what is the result in array after the following code has executed so again we have for loop so instead of shift registers in the last the previous question here we'll be using the question uses the feedback loop so feedback loop have some initial value initial array value as 1862 and the function inside the for loop is insert into array so insert into array will take one input array and will have the index at which the data has to be inserted 
and the data which needs to be inserted also as the inputs of your insert into array. So insert into array have three inputs. One is the base array. Second one is the index at which the data has to be inserted. And third one is the data. Since the code is going to be executed five times, during the first iteration, the i value would be zero. So we need to insert zero at the index of one, the base array as one, eight, six, two. So in the input array one, eight, six, two, we'll be inserting zero at first location. So this is the first location. So before that, before that we'll be inserting zero. So at the end of first iteration, your output of insert array function would be 10862. Then we are repeating the same operation for the remaining four iterations. So one by one, we'll be inserting the i values. So in the last case, i is zero. During the first iteration, i value is one. During the second iteration, i values Sorry. During the first iteration, i value is 0. During the second iteration, i value is 1. During the third iteration, i value is 2. So, in the last iteration, that is, that is in the fifth iteration, i value would be 4. So, we will be inserting one by one the values from 0 to 4 into your base array at the index of 1. So, you will have 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. 0, 8, 6, 2 will be the correct answer after execution of the code. So we have inserted 5 elements. You can see we have inserted 5 elements since your for loop is executing 5 times. We have inserted 5 elements but the order is the latest one, the latest insertion will be available here. Then 1 but lost, 2 but lost and 3 like that you are we are inserting the data on your initial array so our final output array would be a 1d array of values 1432108.62 what is the value of x after the following code has executed So first we have to understand what are the roles of the shift registers on left hand side. So in the left hand side you can see three shift registers, one, three down arrows and one up arrow. So the first one will show you the latest value. One below will show you the latest but one. One below will show you the latest but two. So the question is what is the value of x after the following code is executed. So here also we have five iterations. So all the five shift registers initial values are connected to uh, five. That is all the shift registers have initial value as five. The only function we, we are using inside the for loop is add function. So this greater function is again to check whether it's greater than 15 then the boolean or the LED should glow. Now let's go one by one the iteration. Let's calculate what would be the value of x. During the first iteration, your values on, on all the shift regi register would be 5. So your x value would be 5 after the first iteration. After the second iteration, we have 5 plus 0 in the last iteration. So 5 would be generated. So 5 will come here. So again 5 will be the case. So x value would be 5. Let's move on to question number 9. What is the result in subarray after the following code has executed? So we have two functions. Sorry, we have one function, array subset. And it is having input as 3, 4, 7, 10, 8, 5, 7. And 
we would like to calculate what is the subset of this array what is the subset of this array having length as 4 or we start with the index 3 and we want to get 4 elements from the index specified let's move on to question number 9 what is the result in subarray after the following code has executed so this question is having one function called array subset array subset we have a one dimensional array and we are specifying or the question is providing uh, the index at which the subset has to be generated or has to be derived and also it specifies what would be the length of the subset array so this function will go to the index 3 so this is index 0 index 1 index 2 index 3 we'll go to index 3 and take four elements since we specified length as 4 so we'll take four elements from index 3 and generate the subarray so our subarray would be 10, 8, 5, and 7. So the answer is 10, 8, 5, 7. What is the result of the following array subtraction? It is very similar to the previous question or the old question one we have seen with addition operations and having inputs as arrays. So the difference is here we have only subtract. So one input is three element array and another input is two element array. So the subtract function can perform subtraction of array elements also. So it will take the first element as 75 and 100. Subtraction between that is 75 minus 100 will take place your output array. 0th element would be generated that is 75 minus 100 minus 25 would be the 0th uh, element and 50 minus 25 would be the first element and 50 minus empty array so here empty element no element so we cannot do the subtract operation because there is no element present on the second array uh, at the index of 2 so we cannot do the subtraction of 50 minus empty element so only two elements will be present on your output array which would be minus 25 and plus 25 question number 11 which structure must run at least one time so if you look at the difference between the while loop and for loop while loop will execute until the condition is satisfied whereas for loop will execute as many number of times as we have mentioned the n value or the iteration value so the basic characteristics of while loop is it will execute the entire code available on the while loop and finally it will check for the condition whether the condition is met or not Whereas for loop, it will check the number of iterations or number of count to be executed. From that, it will start executing. So the basic difference is while loop will execute at least once and check for the condition. Whereas for loop will execute or it will not execute when, when the n value is equal to 0. So which structure must run at least one time? So, we have chance of uh, connecting n value of for loop to 0 and we can make for loop not to execute. So, we can make 0 execution on for loop. Whereas, while loop, at least we have to execute only once even when the condition is true at the first instance itself. So, the answer is while loop must run at least one time. You must create a custom icon to use a VA as a sub-VA. 
So we know what is sub VI. Sub VI basically will have parts such as icon and connector pan. The icon of any VI will be the default lab view icon will be there. The question is it's mandatory to create a custom icon to use a VI as a sub VI. The answer would be false because it's not mandatory still we can use the default icon for, for sub VIs. It's not required to create uh, custom icons. It's not mandatory to create but creation of icons for any sub VI is very much recommended to differentiate various sub VIs on seeing the icon itself. Otherwise all the sub VI will have common default lab view icons. So on looking at the icon we may not able to differentiate the various functions of the sub VIs. So it's always recommended to create a meaningful icon for each of the sub VI so that on seeing the icon we should be able to explain what would be the function of the sub VI. So the answer is here. The answer is false. You do not need to create a custom icon to use a VA as a sub VA, but it's highly recommended to increase the readability of your code. Question number 13. In the, in the following VA, what will be the execution order of functions? As we have seen the question number one, this also proves or shows the data flow background or data flow style of LabVIEW programming. LabVIEW will not execute from left to right or right to left. LabVIEW basically will execute based on the flow of data. So how the input data is available, how the data is flowing from input to output, according to that your functions will execute. The inputs here are the X and x2 since x is connected to minus 1 minus 1 is having one function so minus 1 will execute first then divider will execute second then multiplier will execute third and then adder will execute fourth then followed by absolute or rounding function will execute fifth so the order would be minus, divider, multiply, plus and absolute value as shown in the answer slide. Let's move on to question number 14. What is the output of the initialize array function after the following code has executed? So initialize is one of the array function. It will accept two inputs. One is the element and another one is dimension size. What element we want to initialize for the array and what is the size of the array? So this initialize function, the element is 3 and dimension size is 4. So after executing this initialize array function, we will have output as 3. 3, 3, 3. So your output would be a 4 element, 1 dimensional array and the value is 3 as we have done the initialization as a 3. So the answer would be 1D array of 3, 3, 3 and 3. Let's move on to question number 15. What value does the result F2 indicator display? after the VA containing this stacked sequence structure executes. You can see in the block diagram there are three frames. Frame 0, frame 1, frame 2. So all the frames forms a sequence structure. So only one sequence structure that is a stacked sequence structure. 
So as per the basic property of stacked sequence structure or sequence structure, the first sequence will execute, then the output after completion of the first sequence, the second sequence will execute, then followed by third sequence. So first the value 8 is generated or placed on your 0th sequence that is moved or placed on the output line so that it is now it is available for your second sequence as well as first sequence. So the first sequence is getting the same data which is generated on 0th sequence. Similarly, second sequence also getting the same data. So our question is what is the result on F2? So whatever we supplied on 0th sequence 8 is now it's available on first sequence and second sequence. So 8 is coming here, 8 plus 5, 13. So result F1 is 13. Here we have 8 plus 5, sorry 8 into multiply 5. So 8 into 5, 40. So result of F2 is 40. So the our question is what is the result F2 after execution of this code? So after all the sequences are over, we have 40 at the output that is result F2. So answer is 40. The topic of discussion is sequence structure. Justification is sequence local store data between frames of stacked sequence structure. The sequence local is only written into frame 0. Thus frame 1 has no impact on frame 2. The value in the result F2 is 8 times 5 which is 40. Question number 16. What is the result in subarray after the following code has executed? This is somewhat similar to the, the previous or previous question uh, where we have array sub subset function. Array subset function have inputs such as 3, 4, 7, 10, 8, 5, 7 and go to the index of 3, 0th index, 1st index, 3rd, 2nd and 3rd index and take 4 elements. So we have the output of the uh, subarray as 10, 8, 5, 7. So the answer of this question is 1D array of 10, 8, 5, 7. Let's move on to question number 17. What value does the value out indicator display after the VA executes? Look at the block diagram. No input is connected to N terminal. Whereas we have empty array empty array is connected to for loop. The auto indexing of the for loop is enabled. So the code inside the for loop is you have plus and subtract functions. We have shift registers up arrow and down arrow also. Now the question is what is the number of iterations the for loop will execute? Since n is empty, it has to go as per the number of elements in the empty array or the array since auto indexing is enabled. Since the array does not contain any elements, for loop will not execute or, or the number of iterations is equal to 0. So for loop will not execute even one time. So the number of execution is equal to 0. So in that case, what would be the value of the value out? So here you have to basically lab you even without execution of any single iterations also, if there is a shift registers connected on, on the for loop, then whatever data we initialized or in any of the shift register operations whatever data we initialized here that would be immediately available on your output shift register though we have not done any of the operations inside the for loop the five val value at the input of shift register 
will be transferred to your output terminal and the value out would be 5 at the end of the execution of this code. So the answer is 5. So answer is 5. Topic is loops. Justification is an empty array is wired to the for loop using an auto indexing tunnel. This causes the for loop to iterate once for every element in the array which is in this case is 0. However, the value 5 is returned to the shift register before loop execution and since the loop iterations 0 times the same value 5 is present at the output shift register. Let's move on to the question number 18. What is the value in the feedback answer after the third iteration of the loop below? So for loop is going to execute 5 times but the question is what would be the answer of feedback answer after the third iteration. So let's go one by one the iterations let's check what would be the answer here. During the first iteration where initial value during the first iteration Your initial value 1 is available on the feedback answer. So the same 1 is connected to your multiply function. So 1 into 2, 2 will be available at the end of first iteration. Let's move on to question number 19. How many iterations will the following loop execute? Here we have for loop. Again for loop is connected to n value as 15. And array is connected to the for loop input having auto indexing enabled since the array displays only four elements in the array you can assume that the array is having only four elements so there are two values for the number of iterations for a for loop one is 15 and another one is 4 so out of that for loop generally or for loop has to choose the minimum number of iterations among multiple iteration counts. So for our case, for in this problem we have 4 iterations and 15 iterations, so the minimum is 4. So the for loop will execute 4 times. So the answer is 4. Let's move on to the question number 20. What are the results in max value, max index respectively? after the following code has executed. So the function is array max and array min. So output of this function will generate what is the array maximum value, what is the array minimum value, what is the index of maximum value and what is the index of minimum value. So look at the input array. So we have seven elements in that the maximum value is 7. The index of the element 7 is 0, 1, 2, 3. So 3 is the index of the element having value 7. The minimum value of this array is 1. And the index of this element is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the minimum value is 1, the index is 5, and maximum value is 7, and the index is 3. So the question is what is the max value and max index? So we have to check only the max value and max index, max value is 7, and the index is 3. The best method to pass the data within the same VI is by wire, global variable, local variable 
all of the above are identical so what is the best method so best here represents which method offers bet best performance so the difference of using wire or global variable or local variable to pass the data within the vi is the amount of memory consumed by various methods suppose if you pass the data by wire then there is no additional memory required for transferring the data from one point to another point but if you use local variable or global variable which is creating the duplicate copy of your data so consuming additional memory usage which leads or which reduces the performance of your application or code so the best method to pass the data which occupies less memory or which does not consume any additional memory is the wire transfer of data so the best answer for this question is the option a that is wire all right let's move on to question number 22 what is the result in new string after the following code has executed we have a function called replace substring basically it is going to replace the substring which we have connected to the substring input in the main string at the offset we specified with length number of strings so we have a main string so in that we are going to replace the substring so the replacing will start at the offset specified at the input terminal and length of replacement is specified at the length of substring input so having hello world go to the offset 6 so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so go to exactly 6th offset position and replace our st substring called 2u and go to this point and place 2u function and we have specified the number of substring the length of the substring should be 7 so the 2u is consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, only 7 strings are there, 7 characters are there. So we will be replacing the entire substring into the main string at the offset 6. So you will get the replacement or the answer as hello to you. In the hello world, we removed or the re world is removed by this replace substring function and the new substring called 2u is added. So the answer is hello to you. Question number 23. Which of the following function assembles cluster elements by their own labels? Right. So there are four functions unbundle unbundle by name bundle by name bundle so as per the question we are we want to assemble the cluster elements by their labels so from the question itself we can understand we need to assemble that is we need to bundle so either we have we have to choose the option as c or d but another condition is we have to assemble by their labels, not by names. So option D would be the correct answer that will assemble all the cluster elements by their labels.
Let's move on to question number 23. Which of the following functions assemble cluster elements by their own labels? So there are four functions unbundle, unbundle by name, bundle by name, and bundle. So as the name itself indicates that we want to assemble the cluster elements. So unbundle basically to separate the elements and bundle is to combine the elements or assemble the elements. So we have to choose the option either C or D. But we have another condition saying that we need to assemble by their own labels. So labels means is basically the names of the elements. So we want to assemble cluster elements by their names. So that can be done with the help of a function called bundle by name. So bundle by name is the correct answer. Which of the following will allow you to run the text based code in LabVIEW? Sequence structure, event structure, case structure and formula node. So sequence again it's for executing sequence of operations. Event is event based execution. Case structure is case by case execution whereas formula node is meant for text based code execution especially C code execution can be done with the help of formula node. So the correct answer is option D formula node. Last question. The figure below what is the value at item G during the fourth iteration? See, look at the item G and its connection to while loop. Item G is basically a tunnel. So this tunnel will get the data before the execution of the while loop. That is the data 2 will be supplied inside the while loop during the very first iteration. Then after that, no input will be allowed inside your for loops. So until it completes the entire execution of your for while loop or until the while loop is stopped, the G value will be 2 only. So for each and every iteration, G supplies only 2 to your adder function. So 2 plus 1. 2 plus your i value will be continued to execute until we click the stop button. So with that, I close this video lecture. I thank everyone. I thank all of you to. With that, I close this video lecture and thank you for watching this video.